Hello electronics and audio people. This is a video series on SMSL D6S DAC and there's a lot of information to show. In later videos we'll be looking at the details of the PCB, the components used and modify the power supply, but in this video we start with unpacking features, measurements and overview of the device. Here we have SMSL D6S DAC. Why did I get this? This was 106 pounds discounted on Amazon. It has balanced output and Amir from ASR has measured excellent THD plus N. I mainly got this for measurement applications. I will see if I can make an audio signal generator out of this. USB cable, power cable, and this is the main unit. It has some weight in it. So it's a compact unit and what's the best? It has balanced outputs, mains power supply, digital inputs, very simple display. So let's see. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. Cable is, power cable is quite short by the way. It's not very obvious what are these other options here except the input. We have inputs, so use USB, Bluetooth, optical, coaxial. So we have the filters of the DAC chip available here for selection and here are the explanations for those and some plots. So you can try if you can hear the difference between different filters. Then there is a PLL setting so that can potentially impact the cheater or it can also make it kind of unstable, unlock the input. It's not very useful to have things like this for user control. So I guess it's good for geeks. Oh, uh, that's the, the display brightness. And that's it. And while I have the user manual, let's look at the specs as well. So we have five volt XLR output, two and a half RCA. From XLR, we should get 129 dB dynamic range, DHC plus N minus 123 dB. Very impressive figures, especially given the price tag. There is actually a power button. When you just hold this button, it turns off and you get a small indication here, it's off. I have the dock now on my desk. It is connected, not to the music system, but my Cosmos ADC measurement ADC. Besides the measurement ADC, I'm going to be using this one for some of the measurements as well. This is a notch filter. It has 1K and 10K minus 30 dB notch filter with 20 dB preamplifier. THC, THC plus N figures are 30 dB higher in the measurement than they are in real reality when using this one. Now we have the D6S stack connected to a PC with USB and the XLR outputs are connected to Cosmos ADC, measurement ADC, and then we have Virgin's multi-instrument open in Windows, which is used for measurements. Showing now there's no signal, so there's flat noise floor. And when I put the signal on, there's a bit of averaging first. Okay, let's put it a little bit down to the kind of standard minus one DPFS. Here we have the reading THD minus 126, 25. DHC plus N, minus 113, 114. So they're great numbers, but it's still quite a lot short of what Amir at Audio Science Review measured 122 dB almost. But this kind of levels, of course, it requires state-of-the-art measurement kit. So there's something we can do with this, this setup, use an external notch filter and preamplifier, which is the Cosmos APU. Next, I will connect that and see what I get. And now we've got the notch filter in the channel 2, the green channel. So we see the noise floor is higher because there's a preamp. But if you look at the figures now, so we should add 30 dB in these now. So, so the THD would be minus 133 dB and the DHD plus N would be minus 124 ish dB. So those numbers are really, really high, even higher 
than here. Of course, we have also a little bit higher signal level, so you kind of expect that. Another thing is that this is not APX555 like Amir has, so the results are not necessarily as accurate as that one, but it definitely tells that this is a very, very high performing DAC and that this particular unit I have is performing well. There's nothing wrong with it. So this was more like a sanity check. I'm not um, benchmarking this in any ways, but especially if I start doing something now with this device, I know that at least it was performing well before I did anything to it. Okay, this is the main unit. As we can see, the case is kind of one piece. We can see some edges here. So I hope if we open some screws here, this would just kind of come out in one piece. Nothing moving yet. I suspect these screws are just for the XLR, so I'll just try to open a little bit more. Okay. We got a, a weak hook here and at least we get something off. There's the antenna. Something's still holding it there. Just moving a little bit this board, so maybe it's just there to pull out. Maybe it's the rotor encoder knob holding it. I managed to get the knob off. First it felt really tight. I, I couldn't get it off. I, I warmed a little bit with hot air and then yeah, it, it got off quite easily. I scratched it a little bit, the chassis, but it won't matter for my application. So that's the one that was holding the front panel. So now we probably get it off quite easily. Okay. These inexpensive Chinese devices just keep surprising me. Also, if you look at this PCB, it's, it's beautiful. It's aesthetically nicely made as well. So here we have the power supply. It's a mains power supply. So these components here are high voltage. So we have this air gap here working as the isolation along with the transformer here. So we have some protection filtering here. This one is a common mode choke here. It's not a transformer. Then there's a rectifier. We rectify the mains voltage. So we have 400 volt cap here. It's a high voltage. And then there's a DC DC that goes through this transformer, which is there for isolation. And then the main rectifier is here with these discrete diodes. So that creates our actual supply voltages. And all this part here is power supply. A DC DC here under creating another supply. And here we have a few different LDOs. There are some voltages marked on the PCB 3.3, 1.8, 0.9 volts. And there are some other switches or LDOs that control the supply lines. One thing is also that the device is always on, so the, the power is soft power. So the main power supply is always on, so they likely control some of the rails here. Here we have the inputs, so there is a, a USB TOS link and an SP diff. And here is a Bluetooth module, so I removed this rear panel with the antenna connector here. So here we have the XMOS IC for the USB input and there's some processing as well. Some of these take all the inputs in and do the input switching, which then goes to the ESS DAC, which is here. And this is the analog output states of the DAC. And then we have the, the XLRs and RCA output connectors here. Like overall, the PCB looks very tidy. It's, it, it really looks like a well-made product, especially for the price. Here we also have some further insulation for the mains high voltage power supply. And as you can see, there are some ground slits here, which usually is kind of controversial. You shouldn't need to do that. It can cause some issues also, but they probably know what they're doing because it performs so well. And there are things like you slit the ground here to avoid the audio currents going through the, the digital bit. So um, it, it's fine if you when you do it, if you just take care that you don't have any signals crossing the slits. And then, of course, the user interface is very simple here. We just have this uh, simple display, IR for the remote, and this uh, rotor encoder here. So this is pretty much it, very briefly. And as I mentioned, we will go into more details in the next video.
I'm gonna be doing first some power supply voltage measurements. So first we need to plug this in. This cable is not connected anywhere yet. Uh, because it's a mains powered device, you need to be very careful. I'm gonna be using this small cardboard. So even if we know that the high voltage is there, when we just do things, we forget. I'll be using this old DMM here. This is probably not the most accurate device, but it's enough for now. I just need to know approximately what's going on there. So here we have the rectifier diodes coming out of the transformer, and I expect these large electrolytics here, they are mostly connected to supply, so I will start going through these electrolytics and see what kind of voltages I find. One's 12 and a half, and 12 and a half, so that's, I guess that's what's coming out of the, the transformer rectifier, plus minus 12 and a half, 4.2, this one rail here is 4.2, there's something that looks like DC DC converter here with inductor, so that's I suspect that's where the 4.2 comes from. And then there are these rails marked on the PCB, so there's the 3.3, 1.8, 0.9, another 3.3. These are all LDOs here, and then we have the ones here marked plus minus 11, 11.3, minus 11.4. So I think those are the main supplies. We have the 4.2 and plus minus 11. This one here, I suspect that's the reference for the duck. 3.7. And here we have, so we have first the 12 and a half here. And then we have the 11. So these ones here must be some sort of LDO from the plus minus 12 and a half to 11 point something. I wanted to do one more check, so I'm probing one of the diodes in the bridge of the mains power supply. We can see some switching spikes here, and the switching frequency is around 25 kilohertz. So that's the DC-DC of the mains power supply. Thanks for watching the first part. In the next video we'll be looking at the PCB in detail and the components used. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and see you in the next video. Bye now.